Now, you may not be a prophet, but you're all called to hear the voice of God. You may not be an apostle, but we are all to be sent ones into our sphere of authority and into whatever place of influence that God has called us to. Amen? Can I, can I hear an amen that's excited, okay? Because this, this understanding is really where harvest begins. Because here is how we've thought about it prior to the full restoration of those five. We thought, oh, evangelists are people that win souls. Teachers are those that teach. Prophets are those that line people up and prophesy. Oh, apostles plant churches. Apostles do miracles. You know, pastors have, have a church. Let me just say this. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 doesn't actually say that. What it actually says is God gave these five for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So what we have to understand is the goal of Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 was not to have these five functioning only, but to have these five functioning so that the goal could be achieved, which would be well-equipped saints. Why am I saying that? Because in our old paradigm, it was the evangelists that won the souls. But in this new paradigm of understanding, what we have to understand is that the five-fold ministry equips each and every one of us. Every single one of us should have impartation from a teacher, which is empowerment, what Apostle Tom spoke on last week, so that we know how to read the Word of God and study the Word of God and understand the doctrines of Christ. How many want to read your Bible and be able to study your Bible? Like, okay, ten, like 10 of you. Let's try that again. How many want to read your Bibles? Y'all just really scared me for just a minute, okay? All right, so, so what we have to understand is that we need the impartation of a teacher so we know how to study the Word of God and then teach others. We need an impartation from a pastor so that not only do we get connected to the heart of God, but we become a pastoral representation of the heart of God out in the community. I can tell you Marie Thacker over there, She's done my hair for a hundred years. Uh, she's, 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 tell, let me tell you, it's really good to be good friends with your hairdresser. But you know what? She has people in her hair chair, and she's pastoring them. She may never get them in the doors of this church, but she's pastoring them. She's connecting them to the heart of Christ. Not only is she pastoring them, she's teaching them. And if they need to be prayed for, she's got them right there. Her hands are right on her head. She just puts her hands right on their head. Come on. <laughs> Marie even raised somebody from the dead in her, in her shop one day. They dropped dead. She walked over. She said, breathe. God brought them back to life. They had hair color on their hair, so while they were still unconscious, she picked them up, drug them over to the hair chair, washed all the color out of their hair, put them back on the ground, and waited for the ambulance to come, okay? That's what I call doing your job, Marie, okay? You raise them from the dead, save their hair at the same time, okay? That's awesome. <laughs> But see, so here's, but here's what we do. A prophet isn't just somebody that prophesies and gives you the word of the Lord. I'm a, I'm a five-fold ministry prophet. But my job isn't just to do that. My, my job is to teach you how to hear the voice of God. Right? If every time you need a word from God, you've got to run and find a prophet somewhere, this is, this is not the way it works. Now, we have prophetic teams, we have prophetic ministry, we invite people to come get ministered to, but you must have a personal relationship and an ability to hear for God for yourself as well as for others that may be your man in the Indian food restaurant or your woman behind the Hertz rental car counter. Come on. How many want to be used by God to be those that can be a representation of the gospel? Amen? So when we talk about harvest... Jesus said this, he said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send laborers. And, and this is how we've prayed. Lord, here am I, send them. Lord, I, I pray for those evangelists. Understand this, you are the revival. You are the harvester. So lay hand on yourself and say, Lord, I pray that you will send me as a laborer for the harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen. I tricked you into that. <laughs> so as we talk about harvest, I wanted you to understand that because it's the responsibility of every single believer in the body of Christ. Mark chapter 16, I don't have it on the screen, but Mark chapter 16 says this. These signs.
signs will follow them that, what? Believe. How many believers do we have here? Then these signs should be following you. It doesn't say these signs will follow the pastors. It doesn't say these signs are going to follow the apostles. It doesn't say these signs are going to follow uh, um, uh, the prophets. It says these signs are going to follow believers. It doesn't say believers are going to follow these signs. Come on, rather than be a sign chaser, be a sign creator. In my name, you will cast out devils. Put your hand on your head and say, I bind myself in Jesus' name. Okay. <laughs> we have a deliverance team here. We've had it for over 20 years. And I will tell you, the very first night that we launched deliverance ministry, um, we, I'm going to tell the story. Most of you know it. But uh, we had uh, Pastor Sharon Parks. She was teaching on deliverance. She was teaching about getting freedom in Christ. Doesn't matter how long you've walked in Christ, that we have the, the power to take authority over demons. How many of you have ever had to take authority over a demon? Okay, all right, so, uh, and, and, and talked about ministering freedom to others. So do you realize that when we have ministry teams here on a Friday night, we actually have pastors from other churches that bring their demonized people to Vision Church because they don't know what to do with them. How many, are, how many think that the ideal would be everybody learns what to do and how to cast out a demon? But you know what? I don't mind being a place where people can come to get taught, trained, equipped, and set free so that they could be a representation of God's power out wherever they're living. So Sharon had just gotten done teaching, and she had a team, all her team members come up, and she says, so now I just want to open up the altars. Anybody that wants to come and receive prayer for freedom from any issue in your life, we're going to pray for you. Okay? And so, you know, people were, we, had, we didn't have deliverance teams here. We hadn't really been teaching about it that much. And so people were a little bit slow in coming forward. When all of a sudden this lady came, I was sitting right on the front row, Pastor Tom and I were sitting on the front row, and this little lady that we'd never seen before, she looked pretty frail, a little bit older, um, she came down the front, the front, uh, this middle aisle here, and she walked right up to Pastor Sharon, who was standing down here, and she leaned forward to whisper to Pastor Sharon, and not realizing that Pastor Sharon had a lapel mic on. So when she went to whisper to her, she spoke right into her lapel mic. And she said, I need prayer tonight, but don't try to cast any demons out of me because I'm a Christian and Christians can't have demons. And so Sharon didn't debate with her. She just said, okay, well, let's just pray. Just her little sweet little voice. And she lays her hands on this lady and she says, Father, I just... I just bless my sister right now, Lord, and I just thank you, God, for just touching her body. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of death, go from her now in Jesus' name. And that little lady, she was standing about, what, about there, honey? She went airborne. How many were here that night? How many remember that? Okay. <laughs> were you, you were here, weren't you, Pete? Yeah. Pete was leaving, leading our catchers that night, okay? And so... Um, she was about right there, and she flew backwards through the air to about the second row right there, like airborne. Phew. Like the, the ushers were still coming, and they were like, missed her, okay? <laughs> so they run over to pick this lady up, and while they're picking her up off the floor, because she, I mean, she hit the floor hard. When they went to pick her up, this voice came. Now, everybody in the whole place had just heard her say, don't cast a demon out of me because I'm a Christian and I can't have a demon. She hit the floor. <laughs> they went to pick her up, and this voice came out of her that everybody in the room heard, and it said, you can't have her. She's mine. And the whole church went, ooh. <laughs> Do you remember it, Pete? Do you remember it? And so Sharon just walked right down there, finished casting the spirit of death out of her. The little lady kind of got up. She was kind of shaken, a little bit disoriented, and she left. We, didn't, we don't, didn't even know who she was until the next week. And the next week she drove all the way back. She was from Pensacola, and she drove all the way back over here and met with Sharon. And here was her story. She had been diagnosed with um, uh, cancer that went all the way through her body through her bones, all the way through her body. The doctors gave her less than a couple of weeks to live. She'd been in, hospi uh, in the hospital over at Mayo Clinic. They let her go. 
and just said, you know, go home, have the last few weeks with your family. There's really not anything that we can do for you. There's no chemo. There's no radiation. There's nothing we can do for you. And so um, she, she was driving by here on a Friday night, 10 o'clock, and saw a parking lot full. And she said to her husband, you know what? Before we go home to see our kids, let's just pop in there. Maybe somebody can pray for us. She walks in, comes down at 10 o'clock at night. She wasn't even here for the message. Comes down, gets a spirit of death cast out of her. And at the same time, God irradi irradiated all the cancer out of her body. She went to Pensacola. She went to her doctor because she felt amazingly different. All the cancers that she could feel were gone. She went to the doctor. They did a scan of her body. They could not find a trace of cancer in her body. She came over and gave this testimony. This was 20 years ago. Gave this testimony several different times here. And uh, the, the, the story is, is that she lived, she was an older woman. She lived another eight years. And when she died, she did not die of cancer. Come on, do we serve a mighty God? Amen? My point was, Mark chapter 16 says, in my name, you'll cast out devils. It's not just pastors that cast out devils. We believers have to understand we've got authority over the works of darkness. Amen? In my name, you'll speak with new tongues. You'll drink anything deadly. It won't harm you. That's the prayer my husband prays when I cook. Um, you'll... Uh, uh, you'll lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You'll take up serpents. You know what that actually means? It means you'll take up and dispose of Satan himself. This is what we as believers are called to. And we've got to understand our authority if we're going to understand the harvest. Okay? So I'm not making it very far in my notes. Okay? Okay? <laughs> 